you will notice that I did go ahead before we excavated the decay and I made sure that we had patency of both the buccal and the lingual canal. I made sure that I used caries detector to remove any and all of the decay to ascertain whether or not there was going to be enough coronal tooth structure in order to save. So we have tooth number four here. Tooth number four had a carious exposure and we talked to the patient about how severely affected the tooth was. It's got a very, very long root and we're gonna try and do a modified minimal crown lengthening procedure to see if we can buy some time and save. And, uh, we are gonna go ahead and get started now by first removing the tissue circumferentially around the tooth, trying not to hit the remaining tooth structure. And once the laser is all ready to go, you can see how we're just gently removing the tissue between the two here. Think of this, we're just erasing the tissue and creating a little trough. Can you rinse that please, Julie? And if there's a little bit of char around the tooth, that's not a big deal right now, because we're gonna go ahead and remove that. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the tissue that's hypertrophic that invaginated into the cavity. And again, we're making a little trough right along the tooth so that we have enough to get our 170 XXL burr in. And could you go ahead and rinse that please, Julie? We'll carry that around to the corner of the tooth. And rinse, please. And then take a wet cotton pellet to remove the char a little bit. And she's just scrubbing that away. Again, we'll be able to put it on a hemostasis mode and blend it in a little bit later. By not putting it on super pulse, we're getting some really nice hemostasis as we're doing this. And again, having the proper fluence or hand speed as we're doing this, and just keeping our focal distance about three millimeters away from the tissue that we're working on seems to be wonderful. When I see a little plume, that lets me know that we're right by the inter interceptal bone. That's how I know when to stop. So that's really good. We're about right there. We can remove a little bit of tissue on the adjacent tooth and create a little bit of a bevel as well. And you can go ahead. Here you. Okay. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and take our 170 XXL burr and go right into the little trough area. Mm -hmm. We just want to remove enough so we can maintain biologic width. So we want to make sure there's about 2.04 millimeters put in the textbook. We can also go back over the tooth structure itself and remove that little bit of char. You doing okay, pal? Mm -hmm. You can feel with this really fine burr where the bone is. We'll go back and count it with a periodontal probe in a little bit as well. I'm going to rinse it out and use a little bit of cotton pellet to just make sure that it And do the proximal, so the left and the right. So you can see we have a nice trough, we've maintained biologic width, we've only done what we've needed to do, and then we can actually put the laser on hemostasis mode, which is what we're going to do. 
and we're going to be able to use this to create any additional hemostasis that we might need, as well as can gently blend the tissue at the proximal margin. You can actually see here on the facial, a little bit of hemostasis that we're creating. And there you have it. You can then take it in and we're ready to continue with our root canal.